For more on this, let's bring in two guys with unique perspectives on all this. First is Joel Berry, Babylon Bee managing editor and author of The Babylon Bee Guide to Democracy. I can't wait to crack that book. And Guy Benson, <laughs> townhall.com political editor and a Fox News contributor. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Hey, uh, Guy, totalitarianism, I understand it's a loaded word. It's huge when you're talking about the United States. But let's break down what it means. It means total control, total control. They already, the social media is already dominated by the left, but that's not good enough for the administration. They want total control. They want to get that one part of it, Twitter, which is now not part of the conventional wisdom. And it goes beyond just the administration. I think broadly the left is having this meltdown over Twitter and Elon Musk because they feel at least some of that total control slipping away. So we're seeing these tantrums and these threats. And what strikes me, David, about your opening monologue is you played that soundbite from Corinne Jean-Pierre speaking on behalf of the president, saying what she said. We all watched it. But leading up to that oh, response, yeah. the reason she gave that answer was because she was asked a question by right. a Reuters journalist who was basically begging the government to engage in censorship and control. Yeah. And it seems very backwards and poisonous for members of the press, the First Amendment folks supposedly, to be sort of cheering on this sort of thing because they are so tribally I, aligned with the I, Democrats. That, that last part, actually, I actually included that, focused on that last night, and, and you're absolutely right. There's something really suicidal about the, the press saying, please censor me. I mean, it's just crazy. But sticking with you for a second, Guy, again, CFIUS, the idea that, that Janet Yellen is now thinking of using CFIUS uh, to essentially close down Twitter. Let's get right to it. That's what they're trying to do. CFIUS is supposed to go after, uh, you know, companies that have some kind of foreign interest, foreign manipulators behind the scene pulling all the strings. Some people would say that would apply better to Apple than it would to Twitter right now. Well, this is saber rattling from the Treasury Secretary, basically saying, without using these exact words, nice app you have there, a nice platform you have there. It would be a shame if something were to happen to it. And we'll find any Byzantine excuse within our grasp to visit some punishment on you if we see fit. I would love to know the backstory, David, between, as you referenced, Yellen basically saying we don't really have the authority to go after them this way, and then the reversal. Oh, I'm sure who there got was to her? Yep. What? Who was chirping in her ear, and what exactly caused that? I think that would be fascinating and probably pretty disturbing. Yeah, well, she's a, she's a tool, and 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 clearly she's being used by somebody, manipulated in either way. She's not sure what's up at this point. But Joel, let me uh, talk to you, my friend, because I'd love to be a uh, a B if you don't mind in the room. When you were discussing, if you were discussing uh, with Elon Musk about whether to come back on, whether there were any conditions, et cetera, you've really got skin in the game. You were taken off by the old Twitter. You were put back on uh, by Elon Musk and his folks. How did that come? How did that go down? <laughs> yeah, well, I think we all know that the, the real reason this is such a big controversy right now is, is the left just doesn't like our jokes. You know, they're, they're mad that the Babylon Bee is back in business. But no, I, I think, uh, you know, in, in all seriousness, the, the government uh, lost a, a very a powerful uh, tool of censorship when Elon bought Twitter. Um, I think that... Um, you know, they, they've essentially been laundering their their suppression of, of free speech uh, using this company, and uh, and, it, and it's a huge loss for them. I think, uh, additionally, what Elon has done, in addition to bringing us back, he's he's talked about bringing back all the accounts that uh, that were banned for uh, sharing what Twitter deemed COVID misinformation. And the thing mm. about that is, a lot of the the questioning of the COVID narrative uh, came from the right. And um, when those people were silenced, it wasn't just people who questioned COVID narrative that were being silenced. It's people who were questioning gender ideology. It's people who were being who were questioning, you know, critical race theory, questioning the administration. And uh, you know, Twitter essentially, kind of in the middle of this COVID crisis, had this way to silence a mass number um, of conservatives. And so I think for for those reasons, the left's really freaking out about well, it. Well, right they now. they wanted total control. I mean, that's why I use the word totalitarianism. Totalitarianism. Um, by the way, I just want you've, you've already taken on some of what's happening in the Babylon Bee, I'm happy to say. Here's, here's a headline that you just came out with. Tim Cook says he's ready to pull Twitter from App Store once President <laughs> Xi gives the order. I love that one. And then you, you focus on something at home that ties into the whole pandemic stuff. China taps Governor Gretchen Whitmer 
to lead lockdown enforcement. It's too bad we don't have the picture because you have a picture of Governor Whitmer in a Mao, Mao uniform, you know, one of the Mao suits. Uh, it's, it's that. I mean, let's face it. Satire is satire. It's humor. But it does hit home. I, I really think what Babylon B has done is doing, continuing to do, got under the skin of these people and is part of the reason why they're trying to kill Twitter now. Yeah, mockery is a very powerful tool, and uh, it's something that the right is is just now, I think, getting wise to. The left has been good at mockery for many decades, and uh, and so I think they definitely see that as a threat. They're coming after it. Guy, uh, you know, David Sachs, who's a very big investor, he was on with Tucker Carlson last night. He he was uh, co-founder of uh, PayPal. He was in one of the first investors in Facebook and everything. He says that Silicon Valley, and he's, we should say right up front, he's more conservative than most of the people in Silicon Valley. He said the biggest threat to freedom right now in, in the media is what he calls the Democrat MAGA. And that would be Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. The, the collusion that sometimes happened, it happened with Parler when Apple took, uh, took Parler off of, its, off of its app store. And then Google got together with Apple and between the two of them kind of eliminated Parler from existence. It really hurt that company. Could they do the same to Twitter? Well, and I would just point out to the previous comment, it is just a disgrace and pathetic that the Babylon Bee was ever kicked off of Twitter, <laughs> a satire site. How absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And to your point, I think this really goes to the core of it. Because the government is not allowed to censor for the most part. Under the First Amendment, it uh, has got a lot of oversight. They, they are pretty uh, tied. Their hands are tied when it comes to censorship. But if you have powerful interests in the government with ideological allies in high places in big tech companies, what you've seen is sort of the left Democratic establishment increasingly outsourcing their mm -hmm. censorship impulses to these companies and then turning around and saying, oh, that's just private business doing its thing. Conservatives should have no problem with that. And I think that Republicans are sort of waking up and recognizing while the government and more regulation may not be the solution here, it's a dangerous game where the censorship Censorship is happening at the behest of the government by these other tentacles that are not technically mm -hmm. the government but are closely aligned with at least one of the tribes or the parties within the, within the government. That is something here that I think deserves a lot of scrutiny and attention. And hopefully a new House majority starting next month or next the month after next will ask serious, informed questions on exactly this topic. By the way, uh, I shouldn't say that David Sachs is the only one in Silicon Valley. Netflix co-founder. Reed Hastings just came out with a statement. He calls Elon Musk, quote, the bravest, most creative person on the planet. Wow. So uh, there are some <laughs> cracks in the, in the whole uh, uh, social media uh, group that, that had controlled content Good. so carefully. So there, there is progress. Also, by the way, it's a very cryptic note from Elon. He's, he's known for his cryptic notes. Sent out a tweet today saying, thanks to Tim Cook for taking me around Apple's beautiful headquarters. So uh, who knows what's going to happen in the next hours. But again, it takes takes the folks in the Biden White House a long time to get the message that people do not want censorship. We love our First Amendment. Let's keep it that way. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Thank you for being here. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, David.